Hi everybody, and welcome to a second episode of the podcast on traditional European dance. Today, we're going to the south, at the crossroads of Arabic rhythms and the gypsy tradition. I'm talking about flamenco. Flamenco is part of Spanish well-known tradition, but has gained popularity throughout the world as it was declared an intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2010. The different facets of flamenco are singing, guitar playing and dancing. But its roots and the route to popularity were more complex. Undeniably, there is not only one reason or event that restrained flamenco to acquire a recognized status as a global dance in line with ballet and hip-hop, but rather a variety of factors that enabled this transformation. So, do you really know the flamenco that well? We'll see how today. Well, to begin with, flamenco has found its origins partly in the heart of the gypsy Indian culture. In fact, due to diaspora in the 15th century, the gypsies travelled for centuries across the lands of the globe, most likely India, Iran and Egypt. Through that, they started to develop a range of different folk dances they encountered while on their journey, which then now have amalgamated together in order to create their own identity and art of expression. Moreover, during the Phoenician Empire in the city of Cadiz, Hindu dancers were hired as entertainers for the festivals, aspects of which were incorporated into local processions and religious festivals. A very strong resemblance can be seen with oriental dance such as African dance, Mozarabic Zambra, which combines elements of Andalusian folk dance with Arabic elements. In the case of flamenco, elements such as the outturned leg position, sharp angles of the body and arms, splayed fingers, rapid barrel tones, and other braceos and zapateos, arms and feet moves and most certainly the percussive foot movements are all evident. In addition, flamenco is also about music. Obviously, the singing part is not left aside in a tradition. In fact, it's the most important part. It's called the cante in Spanish. Flamenco originally contained the cante with hand clapping, palmas, or rapping percussive accompaniment. The rhythmic guitar, a variation of the Arabic oud, the Arab lute, was gradually incorporated in the 19th century. Its influences come from the Jewish chants in synagogues, Andalusian, Mozarabic, Persian songs, and other African influences via the slaves of the Caribbean, Central, and South American colonies. Following next is the Romantic era. After three centuries of extortion and oppression by the monarchy, flamenco started to finally receive recognition. With the arrival of the Romantic era in Europe in the late 18th and early 19th century, flamenco started to gain prominent status in literature and the arts. Since Romanticism led an exuberant emphasis on nature, the emotional, and most importantly, the communal folklore, its artists were now stimulated by foreign and more bohemian cultures, such as the Andalusian one. But how is it nowadays? How the flamenco is represented among the crowds? So, except for the sensual feeling the dance can provide, the burning passion in the soul of the dancer that can't wait to be free in a perfect performance, flamenco is also part of religion. Like in churches, Rituals play an important role in flamenco. In fact, as it comes from the gypsies, who were a very religious community, influenced by Catholicism in the majority, but also by Protestantism, Islam and Buddhism, the spectator of a flamenco representation can see and feel the intimacy, yet the surprising and happy experience thanks to its great energy transmitted. By dancing flamenco, you free your body and your mind. It's like being transcended by a tradition, receiving the history of flamenco and feeling it in all your body. 
Then you can throw yourself out in vueltas, quick steps, and original learning which hide more than one only secret. For example, José Maya, a Spanish gypsy dancer, said in an interview, I dance for God. In silence, my dance is a contemplation, a path to connect myself to God. Well, now, we haven't talked about how to learn flamenco yet. So how about the schools? Concerning learning, flamenco is also well known to have excellent schools to learn properly the discipline and the movements. But you can also teach yourself online, as the modern era is very into technologies. It is even more simple to find flamenco courses close to your house, even if you live internationally. Well, guys, it's almost the end of our podcast. So to conclude, I would say that flamenco is known as a unique dance because it's free. The movements of arms combined with the twirling outfits of the dancers, especially women, describe liberty and the will of an entire people to express its own story. Thank you so much for listening to me and the flamenco story. I hope you enjoyed it. The next episode will be about the dance theater, a dance that uses expressiveness and theatricality in choreographic writing and dancers' movements. Have a good day. Bye.